Now we've talked about two different types of mechanical waves, but what we haven't yet talked about is what happens when waves meet. How do they interact? If I have a string and I send a wave pulse from each end, what happens when they meet in the center? Now, if they have two pulses of the same sign, is that any different from what happens if we have two pulses of opposite sign? So, to start with, let's have a look at that simple case and see what happens when we send wave pulses along a string. So, what we're going to show here are what happens when two pulses on a string come together. So, for the string, we've got this dense metal spring which has a high mass per unit length so that the speed of the pulses is not going to be exceptionally high. Now, what we're going to do to start with is we're going to send two pulses with the same sign along the string. So, look closely to see what happens. So, what you should have seen is that when the pulses came together, their amplitudes added, and so that right in the center when the pulses met, we had a very large amplitude, or twice the amplitude, of the individual pulses. Now, look again, and we'll do it another couple of times so you can confirm that you see these two pulses adding together, and then passing through each other and carrying on. So that, a two that shows two pulses of the same sign. What we're going to do now is show two pulses with opposite signs. So you'll see one pulse which comes with an amplitude to one side of the string, the other pulse will come in with an amplitude to the opposite side, and let's see what happens when they meet. So what you should have seen there is that the two pulses pass through one another, they don't meet and cancel out and stop, but when they do meet in the center, the string almost returns to its equilibrium position. That won't be precise in this case because the two pulses that we're generating are not identical, so there won't be a perfect cancellation for that brief instance in the center. But there should be a pretty good cancellation. So we'll try that another couple of times. So look for the cancellation in the center and look for the pulses passing through one another. So, what we demonstrated there with the string is called the principle of superposition. When you place two waves on top of one another, the displacements add, and the net displacement is the sum of the displacements from the individual waves. So, to understand the maths behind that, let's have a more detailed look at the wave equation. So here's what we saw with the string. We saw two pulses, each moving in towards one another, and as they passed through one another, we saw this large uh, amplitude pulse uh, briefly in the middle. So what's going on here? Well, here's our wave equation uh, that we're familiar with, and let's assume that we've got two solutions to it, one here which we'll call phi1, and one that we'll call phi2. So these are both solutions uh, to our wave equation here. So what we want to know is what happens if we add these two solutions. So if we add them together, then we're going to have phi1 plus phi2. So is this a solution as well?
right? Is this a solution uh, to our wave equation as well? Uh, because if it is, then of course what we can do, we can always add solutions of the wave equation to get other solutions of the wave equation which would explain what's going on here, that the sum of these two displacements gives us a third solution to the wave equation. So let's have a look at this. Well, we've got partial squared and now phi 1 plus phi 2 um, by partial x squared. Well, that I can separate out and I can say that's partial squared phi 1 by partial x squared plus partial squared phi 2 by partial x squared. But each of these, we've said, are independently solutions to the wave equation. So I can take this expression here and I can substitute it into the wave equation now just using phi 1 and what I find is that this is going to be equal to 1 over c squared and now I've got partial squared phi um, 1 by partial t uh, uh, squared and here I'm going to have the same thing I'm going to substitute that into the equation here and I'm going to get partial squared phi 2 by partial t uh, squared with a 1 over c squared out here well, now I can just factor this. This is 1 over c squared, and then it's going to be partial squared, and I can combine these together, phi 1 plus phi 2 divided by partial t squared. So what I've shown here is that if phi 1 and phi 2 are independently solutions to the wave equation, then the sum of the two of them is also a solution to the wave equation, and that's why we can just add the two displacements together, because the sum of these two independent solutions is also a solution to our wave equation. And the reason for that is that the wave equation is what we call a linear equation. It has second order differentials in it, but you don't have terms like this squared, right? That would be a nonlinear equation. It's only to the power one, so it's a linear equation, and that means that if you have a, you know, two solutions to it, then the sum of those two solutions is also a solution to the wave equation. And that is why superposition, this principle of superposition, where we can add the displacements together, that's why it works. So we've now seen how the linear nature of the wave equation, it's a linear partial differential equation, gives rise to this principle of linear superposition, where if we want to calculate the displacement of a medium when two waves are, are passing through that point, we can just add the displacements of the two waves together. And as we've shown, this is actually how uh, waves work when we look at real physical systems. And this simple principle where we just add the displacements is the physics behind the multitude of different phenomena that we lump together and call wave interference.